All right. Are we good? Cool. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so, hi, I'm David. I'm going to be session chairing for this talk. Uh, next, here we have Rachel Bunder. Uh, Rachel is a data scientist. She currently works at Sol Analytics, where her primary focus is helping homeowners make the best use of their solar energy. She's also an organizer for Sydney Python and Sydney PyLadies. Please make Rachel feel welcome. Well, oh, thank you everyone for coming. I thought in honor of this room, I should change my color scheme a little bit because um, it is very green in here. Um, I was in a talk here yesterday. I was thinking, oh, if we could do one of those green screen capture things. So if anyone wants to make an exciting background for me, I would love you for that. Uh, so today I'll be talking about the most common mic. Oh, is it not on? It is on. Okay. If I if I start talking quietly, please shout at me. Um, so I'll be talking about the most common street name in Australia. And so this started off as a small side project just to get a bit more familiar with the pandas package in Python. And it kind of grew. It became sort of a short trip to the shops. It became a scenic route. Um, and as a war word of warning, before you start doing projects like this, you might start seeing street names everywhere. And then you go around in Mario Odyssey, which is a great name, taking pictures of all the street signs <laughs> and try working out what the common theme is. It's Donkey Kong Country 2, I believe. Um, and you wonder why do they have different formats for the different signs? I still haven't worked that one out. Anyway, so when I tell people about this project, a lot of people are just like, well, why? Why do you care about the most common street name in Australia? And the reason is, is because I saw this picture. Um, I don't know, laser pointer. So there's a Washington Post article on the most common street name in the US. And I kind of expected all these number streets up here, like First Street. Second Street is common because the first street in a town is often named after the founder or it's just called Main Street. I don't know what Washington is doing with Third Street. <laughs> um, I particularly like Maine, whose most common street name is also Maine, just without the E. Um, but my, what I really was wondering, like, they have all these plant names. So we got um, Dogwood, we got Magnolia, we got Maple. And I was like, we don't do plant names in Australia so much, do we? It's like, I'm, I'm, why don't I go and find out? Um, so the key thing is I'm trying to find the most common street name. So I'm ignoring the things like the street, the road, that sort of descriptor. So that means that we have uh, Burke Road and we've got a Burke Street. They have the same name. They're different streets, even though they look like the same street. But we're just looking at the name. Okay, so let's enjoy this ride. <laughs> no, no falling off bikes this time. So what do you think? What do, does anyone have any guesses about what the most common street name in Australia is? King Street. Macquarie. Macquarie? Macquarie, Elizabeth. So we're going with George. George, yeah, common names, kings, um, governors of New South Wales who likes naming everything after themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, hi is a guess. Um, well, so we. What? Air. Air. As in like Ayers Rock. Ayers Rock. Oh, that's an interesting guess. Um, first one I've heard that time. So we had a few guesses. I think one or two of them were in the top five, but none of them was the most common. Um, High Street, I get a lot of people guessing that. That's around number, uh, it's mid-teens somewhere. I can't remember the exact one. Okay, so let's find out. So first off, data. How do I get the data on the street names? Uh, shout out to the geocoded national address file. This is a massive file on all the physical addresses in Australia. The uh, main reason why I'm not using this is because it came out after I started this project. Um, what I'm doing instead is using OpenStreetMap. So there's a few reasons why I went with OpenStreetMap. First, it was open, I could get the data. Secondly, I was saying, well, if I ever want to do this for other countries, well, the data's there now. Uh, so to, ex to get the data, there's a nice export button at the top, so that's convenient. So you export, you choose a bounding box. This is just the eastern part of Sydney. And then it tells you this area is too large. <laughs> but nice, or Actually, I don't have that picture. Nicely, it does give you a list along the side of other places where you can get the data. Um, and at this point, I was going, well, Australia is actually really big. And maybe I should narrow my focus a little bit first. Uh, so I, instead of saying, what is the most common street name in Australia, I decided to go with, 
what is the most common street name in Sydney, just to start off with to test my ideas. Um, so to get the Sydney data, there's a website called Metro Extracts, which is sadly closing down in the next few days. So if you want OpenStreetMap Metro Extracts, download them now on fast conference Wi-Fi. Um, so there's about 200 different metro areas. Most capital cities in Australia are there, including Sydney. So that's great. Um, the format it gives you is GeoJSON, which is a JSON string with a geometry type. I'm not sure why it's called geometry rather than geography. That's just how they call it. Um, so they have different line types um, or types. So you have like polygon, which would be like the state boundaries. You have line string, which is what I have here, which is, um, would be roads. And you also have points, which are things like where the shops are and that sort of stuff. Uh, the coordinates are just the longitude, latitude, and it shows you that this road goes from here, like this coordinate, to this coordinate, and they'll show you all the bends and everything. So when you download the uh, stuff from Metro Extracts, they give you a folder which has lots of geojsons in it. So nicely, they've already split up, oh, where's the road, there's a road somewhere around here, split up most of the road fi um, files. So you can just read in one file and ignore the rest of the map info. I used Python for this, partly because I use Python for most things. Partly I did want to get better at the pandas library. I have recently seen some R stuff that had some really nice um, geography plotting stuff. I was a bit jealous, so maybe look at R as well one day. So in, so I said I wanted to get better at pandas, but I ended up using GeoPandas, which is like pandas, but it handles the geometry column better. Uh, so to read in street name, um, GeoJSONs in GeoPandas. It's geopandas.read file, nice and simple. It gives you a data frame which looks like this. Uh, it nicely has a name column, so that's the bit I'm interested in. But unfortunately, some of the names were none. And they were of type footway, which is not a road. So the thing with um, OpenStreetMap, when they say road, they really mean any path that goes anywhere else. So they have the Oh, so there's some bends in this road. We have to do some data cleaning, as always. Um, and so it leads to questions like, well, what is a road? Um, in OpenStreetMap, you have the normal residential road. You have motorways. And you have lots of different types of motorways, so it depends on what type of cities they're joining. Uh, you have link roads that join motorways together. You have various pedestrian type streets, like Martin Place in Sydney. And you have miscellaneous things like raceways and cycleways that aren't particularly nice for cyclists. Um, <laughs> busways, lots, lots of different things. And it's just, okay, well, out of all of those, what is a road? And I decided a road is something with a name, because I want to find the most common name, that I can drive a car on. So I can't drive a road, a car on Martin Place, so we don't include um, footways. I can't drive a car in Holdsworthy Military Base because they don't like me there. Uh, <laughs> so I got rid of all the private roads as well. KFC drive through was in the list as well. That's not included. Um, OK, so what is the most common street name in Sydney? OK. And just very quickly, since I'm, I want to do the full street name. So first, I'm just going to include the street, the road, the avenue part of it. So in GeoPandas, to do this, you group by the names. So you say, get me all the. Um, entries that have the same name, count how many there are, and sort the values. So the most common full street name in Sydney, Victoria Road. I was like, okay, that's all right. It's a little bit surprising. Uh, there's, a Victoria, there's a big Victoria Road that's about 22 kilometres long that go out to Western Sydney. It's normally a bit more congested than this. <laughs> um, so. That's, that's all right. So what was number two? And number two was Pacific Highway. And there's <laughs> definitely only one Pacific Highway in Sydney. It shouldn't be the second most common name. This is the highway that goes north up to Newcastle and beyond. So I'm a, I'm a data scientist. I do what a good data scientist does. And I graph it to see, or plot it to see what happens. So yeah, OK, we're having some speed bumps. So to plot in GeoPandas, what this line here does is gets all the street names that are called Victoria Road, get the geometry column, and plot. And I get this. 
So what's happening up here? This is the Victoria Road I mentioned, that's 23 kilometers long or so. OpenStreetMap doesn't really care that a road is one big long road. It cares where the intersections are. So the roads um, are often saved by chunks in between intersections. So it thinks this Victoria Road is made up of 70 little bits. Well, it is made up of 30 little bits. So that's a bit problematic for us. We need to merge these things together. Uh, there's a Python package called Shapely, which deals with all these geometry type objects. It contains a function called line merge, which merges the contigu contiguous streets um, or con contiguous lines together. So I tried merging the Victoria, Victoria roads together. And I got this. So it's somewhat better. There's only seven or so rather than 70 odd. But what's happening in an open street map, the line segments, the road segments don't perfectly join up. There's a little bit of difference and Shapely is pretty strict when they say um, contiguous. So that was a little bit annoying. So I had to write my own, or I had to go forward. I, I couldn't make any turns at this point. I wanted to finish this project. So I wrote my own function that is a bit of a mess. Um, but what it does do is get the road segments with the same name, find the ones that are close together, and then merge those segments. Uh, there's a very nice geometry function in Python that finds the distance between two geometry types, so that made my job a lot easier in this case. And we ended up with this for Victoria Road, so that, that's great, that's what we want. So there are some problems that turn up with this though. This is Pitt Street Mall in Sydney. So what you see out here is Pitt Street. Behind me, there's more Pitt Street, so Pitt Street Mall breaks it up. Pitt Street Mall, they don't let me drive my car in there. So do we now have two Pitt Streets or is it one Pitt Street? Uh, the answer is it depends a little bit on what I define as close together in my merge function. I have it set as a few hundred meters at the moment. So, I, I, so Pitt Street would actually be counted as two separate streets because Pitt Street Mall is long enough that it won't um, can't merge it as one street. It's a fairly common situation in Australia to have a pedestrian mall breaking up a street like this. And I decided, well, it's unlikely to affect the top so many most common street names in Australia. And if it does, well, I'll deal with it later. I didn't have to deal with it later. So that's a good thing. So OK, we're back to what is the most common full street, full street name in Sydney. And that is Short Street. <laughs> Which is, which is good. I, I suspect we don't see sh many short streets because they're quite short. Um, and I also got a bit distracted at this point trying to find out what the longest short street is. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's a bit problematic. It asks me at the end and I'll explain the problems there. Um, but the top five is short, uh, short, George, William, John and Church. So we had George as one of our guesses earlier. Um, and so this feels good. We got George and William are both kings. We got John, which is just a common name. And yeah, it matches up with some other things, uh, some other analyses I've seen. So I was happy with this. I decided to now tackle um, the name bit. So remember, I wanted to find the most common name. I wanted to uh, ignore the road avenue part of it. So the question is, what part of the street name is the actual name? So if we have X, Y, Z, my first guess was the very last word can be the descriptor. That's going to be street, road, etc., And the rest of it is going to be the name. So I tried that. So we had Harris Street, Anzac Parade, or Cow Pasture Road. So the most common full, um, street name in Sydney, the. <laughs> <laughs> and I, really, I wasn't happy with this. I was like, oh, OK, technically it's true, because you have the avenue, you have the serpentine, you have the ridge. Um, you have the boulevard, there's lots of them. There's like three times the amount of them as the next most common street name. Um, but I was looking at the data and was seeing other problems. We had Kingsway. Kingsway is just one word. In my current model, it, that would be the descriptor and it would have no name, which isn't right because that is the name. Uh, we have Railway Parade North. So my model would say the descriptor is North and the name is Railway Parade. That's, that's more problems. So I had a bit more work to do here. So what I decided to do, if a street name started with the, 
that whole thing is the name. I don't care what else happens, that's going to be the name. Uh, if it's one word, that's the name. And so now I have the problem with the um, north, south, etc. And I was thinking, well, we have a limited amount of descriptors. You can have street, you're in the road, parade, place, and so forth. So what if I list all the potential descriptors? I would have an optional suffix at the end, and everything before it would be the name. Okay, this is sounding good to me. So I started writing out a list of different descriptors, and it ended up being a lot of work because there was lots of descriptors and they were becoming more and more um, obscure, like Muse. And then I started noticing things like Grove Avenue and Terrace Lane <laughs> and Crescent Place. And I'm going, well, I could do something where it's the last instance of the descriptor in the name. And I was like, no, I don't like this. It's too much work now. So I, I looked at the problem. I did a bit of a turnaround here. So street name XYZ. I say, well, the, the, the suffixes, they're fairly limited. You have the cardinal directions and you have off-ramp, on-ramp and exit. That's a pretty limited set. I think I could deal with this. So I was like, well, what I decided to do, if the last word was one of these things, they got, that got taken out and that became a uh, suffix. And then the rest of it followed by an old model where the descriptor is the very last word, ignoring the suffix and the rest of it is the name. Okay, so what is the most common street name in Sydney with this model? Park Road, Park. It's like, oh, that's, that's nice. I know of a few park, park roads and park streets in, in Sydney. Makes sense to me. Um, and this is now our top five for our most common street names in Sydney. So it's interestingly, it has changed a fair bit since our um, last one, when we're looking at the full street name, Victoria's up here now and Railway. Um, Short is still number five though. Okay, so that, that's looking good. Let's, let's consider this model. So I've talked to, I, I've showed some of the problems. I did this work. Uh, I was really happy with this work. I was having dinner with friends. And then I was walking back to the train station and came across Little Riley Street. It's Little, not Lieutenant. And I realized I have some Sydney bias. If I was in Melbourne, I would be thinking things like, in, if you're not familiar with Melbourne, they have Collins Street and then they have Little Collins Street, they have Burke Street and then Little Burke Street. So this question is, are they the same street name? Are those two, is Collins and Little Collins the same name? Is it an optional prefix I should consider? I had a little bit of a look at the data and found there was 347 streets in Australia that are Little Something Street. Um, but some of them were like parallel, like Little Riley, Big Riley, um, but some of them like Little Whiskers Road in New South Wales. There's a Whiskers Road in Western Australia and they're not really related. And like, uh, okay, this is, I'm, and I'm not even sure if there's the same name or not. So I decided to keep my Sydney bias and just move on at this point. Um, but there's other problems. I, I was considering to do an international, do it internationally, try it in other countries. But I was looking at street names in other countries. So, for example, in France, Grande Rue, Grand Street, that, that works all right with our current model. The Rue is um, street in French. But then they also have street names called Rue de Iglise. And the street part is at the beginning of the word. They have um, extra bits of grammar in the middle that I would have to work out. And then um, Iglise is church. Sorry for my pronunciation for a lot of these, these upcoming slides. Uh, it's church. So you would need quite a different model to deal with France. Um, Hauptstrasse, so German. Strasse is street, but it's all one word. You would need to be able to identify all the descriptors and be able to split it out. Uh, Mandarin, so this is Chinju Belu, which is North, North Chinju Road. This last character is road. The second last character is north. But the characters for the different road descriptors, like they're not always one character. Um, instead of just the cardinal directions, they have extra descriptions like um, in front of or behind or in between. So you, very different to how we do street names. Um, and in Rwanda, this is the city of Kingali. So they don't really do street, or they do street, do street names, but they name the streets after the location. So Kingali, KN, and then a unique identifier. So they don't, do street, like, not like we do. And they also have um, the descriptors that actually make sense. So streets are the standard descriptor and, for example, a road 
is a national road which connects the city of Kingali with the provinces or airports. So as a side note, in Australia, people sometimes try to tell me that a road is something that joins two locations together. No, we, we just name whatever we want, whatever you want. <laughs> the amount of esplanades I found that are well inland. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it doesn't make sense to might find the most common street name here because it's all one. <laughs> They're all unique. Okay, so that's, that's enough problems with the model. The main takeaways from this model is that it's not perfect, but it works well enough for Australia for finding the most common street name. So I'm going to keep it. Okay, so we're back to my original question. What is the most common street name in Australia? Okay, so we're back to the problem that Australia is very big. Um, so I couldn't use metro extracts to get the data for all of Australia. So what I did use was um, overpass, the overpass thing. So they have a web interface, which is this. It's nice because instead of having to download all the data for Australia, I can specify what types of roads I want to get to start off with. They have a Python API that looks a bit like this. So it's just um, import overpass. You do your query, and the query is a bit bigger than this, and do the query. But the problem is Australia is big. It's big enough, bigger than what their free servers let me use. So when I try to get the data for all of Australia, it's like, no, nah, too much. You're more than two megs or whatever it was for their server limitations. So I had to divide Australia up a little bit. <laughs> I ended up doing like 50K by 50K squares. So there was a 5,000 squares. Um, just under half of them actually contained streets, partly because there was a lot of ocean here. <laughs> But it came together. It doesn't take to, it took surprisingly not that long to run. Okay, so I got the data, I cleaned it up as I talked before, and I was like, okay, what is the most common street name in Australia? But first, a bit of a detour. So this, this was a DART approach. This, um, and I want to talk about some of the lessons I've learned from this on, on my journey. Start off with, start small. Australia is big. Start with a small location because you don't want to be sitting on your computer for an hour running, for, waiting for your code to run. Start with, some, like, start with something that's manageable to test your ideas with. Uh, choose something for, that's familiar. So I chose Sydney because I live here. I know what the street names are. I can tell you that there's only one Pacific Highway in Sydney. But check your biases. Um, I don't live everywhere in Australia, so I'm not sure with different um, naming conventions are. This holds very true if you're doing any sort of data project. You're not going to be familiar with all the use cases. You need to talk to other people, get people with different backgrounds and experiences involved in your project. Constant vigilance. Always check what you're actually doing at each point. I wasn't particularly interested in knowing what the full street name was, but it was very useful to actually check that out because it would have, it would have taken me ages otherwise. Um, and know what your problem is. Make sure that your problem is actually making sense. I shouldn't find the most st common street name in Rwanda. It, it's not that interesting. Okay, okay back to Australia. This, this is all the streets in Australia. Okay, so if you remember um, back to my beginning, my motivation was that in America, they named streets after plants. I was like, we don't do that in Australia. And I was more or less right. We do have uh, streets named after plants, but it's not that common. So the most common plant name is wattle. And that comes at number 15 with um, 384 streets called wattle. Uh, the most, next most common plant names were acacia at, number, at 29th and banksia at 30th. The, I, I was looking at this and it's, it's very common in Australia. But interestingly, the Esplanade is more common than the Avenue. It, be, it has like seven extra, there's seven more Esplanades than Avenues in Australia. Okay, I, I've been teasing you for the last 23 minutes. And so, okay, let's, let's actually start working out what the most common street name in Australia is. Number five, Victoria. Okay, so this makes sense. So Victoria was queen from 1937 to 1901. That's a decent chunk of, um, since Australia's had road, basically. In the time she was reigning, the population went from uh, about 100, 100, 
about a few hundred thousand to 3.7 million. So we had lots of roads being built in this time. Okay, so number five, Victoria. There's, I don't have listed how many Victorias there are. Anyway, next one, number four, church. So there's 13,000 churches in Australia and 497 church streets. George, yeah, great. So we've had four King Georges in Australia. Um, they've reigned for a total of 84 years, I believe, are calculated, <laughs> um, compared to Victoria's 60-odd. Um, it's also a common name. Did you know we had a, a prime minister whose first name was George? Um, but it's, well, not all the streets would have been named after the King Georges in this case. Okay, number two. Yeah. Railway. So the great thing about railways, there's 32,000 kilometres of railways in Australia, but the great thing is that you can name the street that goes over the railway, railway, but you can also name both streets on either side railway. So this is <laughs> <laughs> railway street and this is railway parade. Um, I like this, this railway street. If you go further up, it actually turns into station street as well, which is number 11. Um, it's surprising how often that actually happens. And finally, number one, Park, yeah. There's, there's Park Street there too, by the way. Um, so I tried to get some numbers on how many parks there were in Australia. It's actually hard. There's over 500 national parks and there's 693 park streets in Australia. So yeah, it makes sense. There's a lot, you can think of um, quite a few parks that have uh, got park streets next to a park road. And to finish up, this is what the most common um, street names in each state was. You can see that Park really dominates the eastern starboard. Um, so Adel uh, Adelaide, Canberra and Tas uh, Northern Territory both had ties. Um, I think there were only four or so streets each with those <laughs> names in each of those places. Uh, what was inter really interesting, Esplanades. There's lots of Esplanades in Tasmania. But it's not Esplanade Street or anything, it's just streets called Esplanade, which I had no idea. I was like, I thought there was a bug in my coat. So I had to get Google Maps out and was looking at all the street names in Tasmania and going, nope, there's all these little towns that just have Esplanade. Um, yeah, so thank you. This is the end of my road work thus far. Uh, there's quite a few things I want to actually do on this project still, like I want to do analysis on the different descriptors and things like that, because in Sydney I found that the most common descriptor was street, but then the second most common was uh, place, not road or avenue, and I suspect it's because of housing, like new areas in Sydney that's been built in the last 30 years, they're probably a bit more aspirational than we used to be, so lots of streets called place. Um, I, I really want to do a machine learning thing too that will generate new street names for <laughs> Australia. <laughs> um, I really want to, yeah, uh oh, we we'll go there right now. But these are my details. There is, some of this is up on GitHub, it's actually on my GitHub blog at the moment, but I promise I am uploading and fixing up my Jupyter notebooks because they're a little bit of a mess at the moment. But I'm on Twitter and I'll post about it when I've actually done it. Right, um, thank you. All right, so I think we have quite a fair bit of time yeah. for questions. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Hey, uh, excellent. Wow. Let's start at the front. Please repeat them when you. Yep. Did you look at street types? Did I look at street types? What do you mean by type in this case? Uh, like street avenue. Okay, yeah, so that, that's what I was mentioning at the end with in Sydney. Um, there's more places than roads or avenues. Um, I haven't done it for the whole of Australia, um, but that, that's definitely something I want to be looking at. Oh, actually, for all of Australia, it does its street, then road, then avenue, I think. Um, but I haven't done anything detailed on it. assuming that it's a more later word that's entered in than 
Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so that, I think, did you, have you factored that in? Or? Um, okay, I'll repeat the question. So the question is, how does time um, affect the street names? So are there things like Esplanade that are more recent street names compared to George, which probably would be an older street name? Um, I would love to do that. It's very hard to find details on subdivision information. So there's some local councils that are really good. Um, Sutherland Council in South Sydney has a 400 page PDF document on a history of their street names. <laughs> it lists all the street names and then there's a description on who, like, it's often like named after the carpenter who lived on this street or I think there was one area that's named after Melbourne Cup winners. Um, but it's very hard to find that sort of detail nationwide. I would love to do it. Um, I probably could do something in Sydney because I got a rough idea, but yeah, if anyone knows of data, yeah. that'd be great. Uh, Tish? Yeah, so uh, data-wise, uh, um, on our platform, we have Sydney from 1943, mm -hmm. well, but images, not streets. So you can see, put your streets on and see if it, there is a street. So you're saying, okay, so you, you have images from Sydney and from 1843? 1943. 1943. 1943. Right, so you can place your streets like your thing and overlay it on the image you will see, or just your text against the raster. Okay, so you say, yeah, you, I, I can look at the, um, from the last 60 years or something. Is that yeah. all of Sydney or just city of Sydney, though? Yeah, city. Yeah, okay. Well, most of Sydney. I'll, I'll show you. Okay. Uh, but uh, Gina is my other interest. Like, uh, are you looking to look at it? Because I'd be interested the variation in the data quality between OSM and GNAP and the segmentation. Okay. So, um, it's an Australian data source. OSM is crowd source, I guess. It's globally scalable, but the data quality might be better in GNAP. So, yeah. Sure. Okay, so the question was about GNAP and if I had any intentions to look at GNAP. I would love to look at GNAP. I have had some people tweet me saying, oh, did you look at the GNAP data? <laughs> I did this. Um, and my, uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see because there are different um, approaches people have taken. There was one approach where they looked at the um, distance of the streets and because GNAF is the physical location, so it's the most common street name weighted by the length of the street, it more or less became, or by the amount of houses right, on it. So you know, snapping of the distance. Yeah, snapping of the distances, yeah. I, I would be interested. I'm, don't actually have active plans for it right now, though. Yep. Um, do you think it would be helpful if the data had existed in OpenStreetMap in the first place with the, the um, street, avenue, north, these things in separate fields? Or would that make your data entry problem too much of a bother? I think it would make the data entry problem too much of a bother because OpenStreetMap, since it is a international standard and there's just so many different standards on different countries it would be very hard to break it up. There's a document, um, misconceptions programmers have about addresses and names. and names and so forth, a whole lot of them. So the address window will come into all the problems. So you'd think you could just do like the um, street name, the north, south, etc. but it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's too many variations. So for context for the recording, the oh, question was, um, uh, would, would splitting up the, f the fields for, for street names in OSM be a good idea? Yep. Um, did you look at the degree of variance in different cities, for example? Um, so I, I know that um, I'm a Canberra and I know in Canberra the streets are all named in themes by suburbs, so you don't get a lot of repetition of street names. I haven't looked at that at all, but that sounds like a great idea. Um, oh, the question was, <laughs> thank you. Um, the question was, have I looked at the variation in street names? So, for example, in Canberra, there are the suburbs are in themes, and so there's not much repetition in between different suburbs. Um, what I would like, what I had been planning to look at was sort of take Australia and the US and sort of say, what is the most common street name in Australia that's the least popular street name in America? Um, do so, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, the variance is an interesting thing because you saw that with the, what I had with the states, that it was very um, 
clear that the eastern states were all park and they were often sort of old, older names like George and things like that. And Western Australia was quite different. I think Western Australia has more of the first, second street names. It's not particularly high up in the list, but it's more common than the rest of the states. So, yeah, that would be definitely something to be interesting and also to map it back to the time stuff, um, looking at the settlement of the different country, um, different states and how it matches up. Yep. Um, this is a bit of a long part. So in New Zealand, they have regulations against that um, towns can't uh, repeat street names. Uh-huh. <laughs> which obviously didn't exist in the past. So are your names up there, uh, is it because there are, is railway in, is railway way popular because every little town has a railway or because it's repeated tons of times in some of the big cities? Okay. Well, Okay, so the question was that in New Zealand they have regulations that stop towns having multiple street names of the same name. And, uh, and well, the actual question was, is it because there are a lot of towns with railways, that there's lots of railways, or is it a town that just has lots of streets called railways? Uh, it's a bit of both. So I, I don't have included in this presentation, but I, do, I have looked at the distribution of railways in Australia, and it's basically follows the population, I, railway, streets named railway in Australia, basically follows the population distribution. So there's a lot in Sydney, um, a lot in Adelaide too. But I think it's, there's places just, just, just get lots of names called railway and small towns. Um, I will say in Sydney though, in the, around the 1900s or so, they actually cleaned up the street names a few times, so they're like, there's too many George Streets in the Sydney CBD, we're going to rename some of them because it's a bit confusing. So they did that two or three times. Um, yes? Um, did you end up finding out what the least common street name was? Oh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's heaps of them. It's a really, really long tail. Uh, so the question is, what is the least most common street name? Uh, yeah, there's heaps of them. It's a really, really, really long tail. Um, a lot of them is slight misspellings, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but there, there's quite a few. I, I... Yeah, Callaway Crescent was one of them because that was quite... Okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot, um, but they're not very interesting, to be honest. And did you, have, did you happen to stumble by the list of subjects? <coughs> on Wikipedia? No. Okay, so this was, have you happened to see the list of suffixes of American streets on Wikipedia? No, I haven't. That sounds fascinating. <laughs> um, I'm guessing it's more than just the six or seven I had. There's one called Stravenue. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stravenue? So in America, they have a suffix called Stravenue. Okay, <laughs> Nick. There's four of them. There's four Stuart Streets in Northern um, Territory. So yeah, my question was, with the really long ones like the Stuart Highway, uh, are they showing up multiple times in different distributions? This may be me being late. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's just me being late, sorry. Um, I'll answer this just for completion. So the question was, is there a lot of Stuart Streets streets in the Northern Territory because the Stuart Highway is being counted multiple times. Uh, yes, uh, or I, that's the first part of the talk and cleaning that sort of problem up. Yep. Uh, slightly related to that, did having to extract the data by cutting Australia into slices give you more data problems to clean up because mm -hmm. you didn't cut a, cut a road in half? Um, Okay, so the problem is when I cut Australia up into 50,000, oh, not 50,000, 5,000 different pieces, did that give me more problems with trying to merge the street names together later on? Um, yeah, there was a bit back and forth. Um, I ended up just reading, what I ended up doing was just getting those, um, getting at all the data from the API and then putting it together in one file straight away and then merging all the street names together. So it wasn't a problem in the end. It would have been listed twice, but then I merged them together. Yep. So, um, does it mean it actually include information about the road within a township or, or else? I, I can't actually hear you. Sorry. Does it mean include whether a road is in a township or not in a township? Such that you can calculate which roads are associated with the 
this link, because you'd actually want to include things like, you know, roads from Darwin to Adelaide, because that would just be skewed off the, the charts. But within the cities, which roads were associated with the most link? What ah oh, okay so what roads okay so the question is did I consider the length of the roads and if there was um, what roads in the cities had the longest length yeah, yeah. Which with the oh, well, so what yeah in particular what names are associated yeah. with the longest length um no I haven't done that I a bit distracted by the longest short straight um, <laughs> so well, okay so the problem with finding the longest short straight um, so in the sh geometry, Python stuff, there is a function called distance that you would assume would give you the distance of a street. But the distances I were getting were things like eight meters or 20 kilometers. And okay, this, this, this isn't working. I haven't dealt right down into trying to work out the distance there. The other problem is that open street map, if you have a two-way road that's got a divider in it, that's counted as two different streets. So you've got the um, one going north and one going, like, going in each direction. So to work out the distance of a street, I would actually also need to look at those and only count, count it in one direction, because otherwise you have the duplicate street lengths. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a whole nother big chunk of work to actually sit down and work out how to do the distances. Uh, Chris. So this was sort of just a fun project that you did. How do you stay motivated? Like, how did you not just stop at the first hurdle? Well, uh, considering it did take me, I, okay, the question was, it was a side project. How did you keep the motivation to keep on going? I started this project at PyCon Brisbane 26, 2015, I think it was. I don't think, yeah, about three years ago. I finished this last year, so there was long periods of time where I didn't do any work on it. Um, I kept motivation because I was doing bits and pieces here and there, and then I submitted it for a conference, and it's like, okay, well, I'm finishing it now. <laughs> it was the main motivation. Uh, Tish again? Spelling, uh, like you mentioned, some of the spelling was different because this is crowdsourced. It would be interesting to see differences with Gina. Oh, yep, that's a good point. Um, so the question was that I mentioned that there were some spelling issues, especially with the less common street names, and it would be interesting to compare it with GNAF. Um, yeah, that would definitely be interesting. A lot of the, there was misspellings in the name, but it was also misspellings, instead of writing out street in full, they would do ST, uh, would be another thing. So I think the GNAF data that I look at, they actually split it up, um, the name and the descriptor already. Um, so that should solve that problem. Should. I haven't looked at it. I'm not hopeful. <laughs> um, do we have any other questions? I think we're running out of time now for questions, but great. Oh, was there one up there? Yep. Oh, so the question was, is it possible that there was enough um, problems with the misspellings and all these other niggly little bits that the order could change for the most common street names? Uh, it could be possible. There was at least a 20 street different for, most of the, for the most com top five. Um, so I've got it written down here. So there are 693 park streets. There are, I didn't list how many railway streets were because I edited my slides in the last minute. Um, there's 551 George Streets, um, 497 Church Streets, and uh, I also didn't list Victoria. So there's like a good amount of street um, in a difference in count. So I, I don't think it's likely to change much with misspellings and things like that. Yep. Were the misspellings on behalf of the mapping or the, the people who wrote the maps, or were they misspellings on behalf of the people who made the streets? <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, are the misspellings on the software or the people who contributed to the software or the people who named the streets? I, I think it's probably the contributions. People um, just put it in, because it's, it's fairly obvious typos a lot, of the, a lot of the time. So I'm going to just blame human error on this. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today. So thank you, Rachel, for, you. for the uh, very interesting talk. And let's <laughs> give Rachel
Thank you.